Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rumors vs. Facts, the UGA sports recruiting show where we try to do just that. We compare rumors and facts. A lot of crazy rumors going around this weekend. A lot of new facts that we have to consider. A very busy week on the recruiting trail. Uh, we've got a lot to cover. Normally, we do this show on Monday nights, but with everything that has happened yesterday and today, we thought, Let, let's go ahead and move it up to Sunday night. and We'll uh, leave Monday for Kirby Smart press conference type stuff or, you know, we'll Regular football things, but it's a quite the hectic day here at UGASports.com. Crazy weekend. We started out on Saturday with what looked to be a fantastic weekend for the Bulldogs. They pick up a five-star quarterback commit. I mean, I know Jared Kurtz isn't a five-star yet, but I think he will be before all said and done. Uh, the, everyone's questioning the baseball team. They wind up sweeping uh, number eight Alabama two games. Lance covered both games. It was crazy. Grand slam walk-off home run in the first one, right as yeah. Jared Curtis is committing. Yeah, uh, seriously, I got that call right as, right as I, I answered the phone. I was like, hey, yeah, I'm filming the video. You were like, oh, no, like Jared Curtis. I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah, it's, I know you want to cover the grand slam walk-off home run, which is the coolest thing in baseball. But, yeah, there's a sophomore quarterback that committed that you need to go write a story about. I was uh, tied up. Dave and I mean uh, Dash and uh, Jed were too. So you were the man. You're the man on duty. So you had to knock it out. But you did a great job. We appreciate that. So yesterday, I mean, at the end of the day, you're like, hey, you just got uh, Stephon Shivers a couple days ago. This is a great day to be a Georgia Bulldog. And then this morning, <laughs> so Justice Terry flips to USC. Uh, uh, Trevor Etienne gets picked up for DUI. Just uh, Isaiah Gibson commits to USC. Every top five offensive or defensive lineman apparently in America is going to USC all of a sudden. Interesting. But anyway, we'll talk about all that. I, I kind of, it's a lot to process. So, Jed, let's take this in order. And I want to mention, you know, a couple of days ago, uh, I won't say out of the blue because you knew that this was a possibility, but a defensive tackle, Stefan Shivers, commits to Georgia. Big, big boy. Yeah, um, <clears throat> like you said, we we had had him kind of on the radar as a guy for a while. Didn't think, you know, that there were questions over whether he was, you know, there was a spot for him. Whether it, it he's it's been a very I guess quiet um, recruitment, and then um, I guess Friday, you know, things started percolating. Hey, this could be could be happening, and and, and whatever. So uh, we checked. Georgia did have a spot for him. And I guess it was probably about four o'clock. Maybe he uh, he decided to pull the trigger. So yeah, when you look at you know Georgia tries to get that one huge guy in the middle of the defensive line. Jamal Jarrett was that guy in twenty three. Nambi Agboko was that guy in twenty four. And now uh, Stephon Shivers is filling that role uh, for twenty twenty five. We've got him listed. I know it's three hundred and sixty six pounds, and was that six five? So six, five. Uh, he I I can. If I'm going to look into the crystal ball, assuming he signs and enrolls early, I'm going to predict that Kirby Smart in December will – Shivers will be one of the guys Kirby Smart mentions is going to need to lose some weight when he gets to Athens. <laughs> um, but, yeah, he is that – he's that zero tech, you know, take up a couple blockers and, and let the linebackers go make plays. So it's a – it's it's a a position that Georgia usually ends up it, – it, at least these guys start out as three stars. Jamal Jarrett was kind of an unranked three star for a while. Namdi Boko was – you know, an unranked four star, high three star, <clears throat> and now Shivers is a three star as well. So, I guess you know, in the star system, these guys aren't necessarily first round picks by this grading scale because they're the ones creating opportunities for other players. But they're certainly um, very, very important in Georgia's defense, especially, and that's why. Uh, and uh, they got they got Stephon Shivers to jump on board. I like the idea of getting a, a big guy like that. And shout out to the folks of the the vault at ujsports.com. The minute, you know, he commits, uh, they go look up his huddle and they start talking about the first thing, like that first video clip of his is, is, is the best clip. And I'm like, it's insane. what happened? So, so, so what happened there? Uh, Lance, tell, 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 tell everybody who hasn't watched his huddle, what you saw when you watch his highlights. So it's, that was, I mean, he can, he can move for a, uh, for a guy that's 366 pounds. I think he was lined up either the fullback or running back takes uh, takes the handoff and just pummels through people. And I mean, he's not the quickest guy on the field, but 
I mean, he's he's rumbling and and he he doesn't really get taken down. He he makes some contact, but it's it's like it's like a bunch of like ten year olds trying to jump on this like thirty year old man. So it kind of remembers. Like, you're you're right. I remember like when we were all in like fifth grade, and my older brother, who's seven years older than us, came and played uh, tackle the man with the ball. He's just we're just bouncing off of him. You know, he's running over people, stiff arming them in the ground, and that's what Stephon Shivers looked like. I mean, he's throwing guys to the ground. Reminds me, what's in the last week we're talking about uh, Zaire Addison, the mm -hmm. um, yeah. interior lineman that George is going uh, going after hard, the guy who runs a 100 and 200. You think 6'5", 366, yeah. you think this guy, this guy can't run to nothing. He ran the ball 70 yards, you know, like a freight train. And I'm thinking, who is the last guy we remember that used to run the ball for his high school? He was an interior defensive lineman. From Decatur, I'm and Devontae old. Wyatt. Mm. Wow, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah dude, that there was clips of Devontae <laughs> Wyatt, like you know, running, and uh, he 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 ran the ball. He's just a great athlete. And again, Stefan Shivers, we maybe you know, three star. Maybe we need to move him up in Jed's rankings, as uh, Chip Crook <laughs> says. You know, um, I could definitely see a situation where they try to. Uh, Slim him down a little bit, but if you can move like that at 366 pounds, imagine what you move like at 330, 325. I was going to say, yes, yeah, slim up is a is a relative term. I mean, they're not going to. Uh, we're we're, we're it, it's not going to be a getting down to 300, 290. It'll be yeah, like you said, Roddy, 330, 325. That that's more than enough. Yeah, uh, he, yeah. To, to clog the middle there. He's, he's not going to be some 285 guy. No. No. Oh yeah, Charles Grant. Oh man. Do you guys even remember covering Charles Grant or watching him? Or were you too young? I remember watching. I remember vaguely watching him. Played for the Saints, right? In yep. the NFL? I remember yeah. the Saints. <clears throat> vaguely. Dude, the, the uh, toss sweep around. I mean, it's not like they gave it to him right up the middle. That dude ran on the edges. He's just a freak, freak athlete. One of the best I've ever seen. So, uh, <laughs> no, Devontae Wyatt. I mean, I'm not saying that Stephon Shivers is Devontae Wyatt, but I'm just saying that – you want your offensive lineman who can dunk basketballs. You want your defensive lineman who can uh, – I love shot putters. I love offensive linemen who are wrestlers. You know, you want uh, your skill guys to run track. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying when you look at uh, the picture we have of him at UGA Sports.com – or at, well, at Rivals.com, it is a cruel photo. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is not complimentary. It is, it's not fair. But it was taken in action. Uh, let's see if we can find it here. I mean, come on. That's, that's not nice. But, I mean, it's him. It's, it's not Photoshop. Yeah. He's, a, he's a big boy, you know. It's just it's what, it is, what it is. But that's more like what he looks like. So I was going to say, all things considered, being yeah. 360 pounds, he, he, carry, he seems to carry it pretty well, yeah. considering how much weight is actually there. Yeah, I mean, look at him there. He looks normal. So he, he's a big boy. Y'all seen the picture of him? I guess he's sitting on a weight bench, like a mirror selfie and gym <laughs> selfie. And man, at like 14. Yeah. <laughs> big old guns, you know? He's like, yeah. He's just yoked out there. Absolutely. That That's so anyway, very excited about Stefan Shepherds. I think getting, I think you guys nailed it. That is a, a definitely a big body in the middle. That's, and they're hard to find as we've mm -hmm. seen. Uh, it's, it's not easy to get those guys, especially who can move like that. So. But okay, so we move from uh, Stephon Shivers to the bigger news of the weekend. Uh, the next day, Georgia gets a uh, commitment from Rivals 100 quarterback Jared Curtis. Yeah, um, Curtis visited in January, and at the time, he was he was looking to make a decision in February. He's like, "Yeah, it's, it's really Georgia and Ohio State." We're like, whoa, like that's obviously very early for a. <clears throat> A 2026 quarterback. And then there was there's some stuff that happened. Like he was supposed to go to Ohio State and then like weather messed it up. So he didn't go and he was going to go to Oregon. So there was some things that kind of were going on that seemed like he was going to push his commitment back. In fact, he told um, Marshall Levinson, our uh, I don't know, Southeast analyst, Texas analyst, whatever, um, that he was going to take some visits and commit next year. It's like, OK, like he's a 2026 kid. That makes sense. Um, and, and then all of a sudden it, it pops out of nowhere this weekend. So whatever Kirby Smart, Mike Bobo, uh, Montgomery Bank Order, whatever they said this weekend, it was enough to get him to say, you know what, 
I, I've seen what I need to see. I don't need to take any more of these visits. I'm going to um, go ahead and jump on board. So um, he plays in Nashville, <clears throat> Nashville Christian, which isn't the the highest level of competition. Like those for those of you familiar with, um, you know, Tennessee high school football, it's not like Macaulay School and Baylor, and it, it's as far as I know, it's not on the same level as those schools. But still, you know, Tennessee's got some good high school football, as, as the Zion Logues of the world uh, can tell you. So, you know, he's got good, and he's he's what, 15? I mean, he just got done with the so sophomore cool. year of, yeah. uh, of of high school. So uh, still plenty of room to grow, develop, uh, get better. I'm sure there's a what little bit there. of tight things, manning camps, all that kind of stuff in his future. So a great ad, first commit for the 2026 class, and it's a very – the the I don't know about traditional route, but you get your quarterback on board first, and then uh, he tries to build the class around him. So uh, a great way to start off the class for sure. Uh, I'll go back to – the last time we remember, I remember a quarterback committing early. His name was Jake Fromm. He was, you know, look at Alabama. Kirby Smart gets hired at Georgia. He comes to Georgia, and he and Richard LeCount put together a ridiculous recruiting class. I mean, look at the number mm-hmm. of guys that were drafted out of that is pretty good. And that set the tone for the next one. And uh, you're right, getting that mm. a play caller like that who is your point man, you know, and, and I don't want to sound um, – positionist against other positions, but if you have a great defensive tackle or you have a great offensive tackle, you know, as your guy who's going out and trying to com- get people to come, the other recruits will listen, but if you got a quarterback, it just carries more weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess it's that natural deference we have to quarterbacks as team leaders. And so if he's calling all the other 2026 guys, like you had a great story uh, earlier today about Zaki Helton, the number one uh, center for 2026. Mm-hmm. Now, all of a sudden, if Jared Curtis reaches out to him and says, look, you already told UGA Sports that the Bulldogs are on top for you, former Alabama commit, uh, you'll be snapping the ball to me. Let's you and me get together, and then let's go get a guard and a tackle and a tight end. I mean, end. they were on campus together this weekend. Like, I would bet a yeah. decent amount of money. Jared Curtis says, hey, buddy, like, let's – we we could be – we could be the the – I don't know. We, we could be the middle and then we can build out from there. Like I, I would, I would bet a decent amount of money that, uh, that those conversations have already happened. And you look at, you know, just off the top of my head, there's Devin Carter, a 26 receiver from Cedar Grove, who's number two receiver in the country. Aaron Gregory, of course, everybody knows. Um, oh, yeah. 26, I mean, running backs, like you said, t- tackles, um, you know, Namdeo Broco, who I mentioned earlier, his brother is an elite offensive tackle in the 26 class. All these guys, now, now those guys have a point of contact in their own class to talk to. You know, guys in the 25 class, Ethan Barber, I know, Bo Walker have been recruiting these guys. But when it's a guy, not just a quarterback, Roddy, but in your class, in your grade, that, you know, you, you might know him from seven on seven or, or whatever, um, like it, it carries that much more weight. So it's, it's a huge to start your class this way with a guy who quarterback, and a guy who has built up a national reputation. Um, you know, DGD podcast mentions Kendra Harrison down here, a, a huge tight end out of North Carolina. There's all these, you know, irons in the fire, so to speak, that, um, you know, you can really start stoking now that you've got a guy on board. Yeah, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good point. I, I forgot about that completely. Uh, when I, when this kid committed, I got a text from um, one, of, one of my sources, and he's like, he said, this is huge. This kid's got a Matt Stafford arm. I'm like, Okay, that's not something they throw around lightly. And yeah. to your point, if you have, like, we have him as ranked uh, the number nineteen kid in the nation, uh, number two quarterback. Uh, if he's nineteen, but if he stays at nineteen, he'll be a five star before before all said and done. Mm-hmm. But my point about having a highly ranked guy like that is, big, as a quarterback, when you are a, uh, like, so you're you're a tight end like that. You no, know, um, uh, you're you're one of the big names out there. And you look at the five-star QB, and you're like, "Well, if George is good enough for him, good enough for me." So that works. Right. That's, that's, that's what it works out. Yeah, looking at he these can, highlights, he's got some like some of these moves remind me of of what I mean. Not that he's Michael Vick either, but what Stetson Bennett would do with his legs and making guys miss as he's going into the end zone, um, which he scored 13 he, touchdowns. I mean, Kirby Smart has said it. You've got to have that. Um, in modern college football, not necessarily a, you know, Lamar Jackson, 
you know, Michael Vick, whatever, but a guy who can get first downs, a guy who can make guys miss, who can scramble in from for, for a touchdown on, say, third and goal from the eight. You know, so uh, Jared Kerr is definitely showing the ability to do that here. And again, he's got, assuming he enrolls early, he's got what twenty months till he's uh, <laughs> till he's on campus. So plenty two of time two years. Bigger, bigger, stronger, faster. Um, you know, all those uh, Olympic kind of catchphrases there. So yeah, again, don't know what better way you could possibly ask for to uh, to start off the 2026 class. Well, it was kind of a surprise they committed. After, like he, he pointed out that he said he, it'll be next year. Mm-hmm. But Lance, you actually saw him on, I won't say on campus, you saw him in Athens. And he seemed to be having a good time. Yeah, from so like – Can I give us – can I give us that uh, oh, yeah. third party stalking that you were doing? I was that was that was great journalism <laughs> stuff there. Oh yeah, Capital J, of, of course. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm I'm like leaving leaving the baseball game. Get a text. Get a text. Um, hey, with some people that I knew that were at Amici's, and I was like, all right, I'll come. Get a slice of pizza. Get a beer after the covering that doubleheader, and then next thing I know, I walk in and I see Mike Bobo at the table. And then I see this like big kid and someone's like, Hey, that's that Jared Curtis kid. I'm like, I look at him and I'm like, Oh yeah, that, that is sitting like five feet, five, 10 feet away from me, um, eating dinner with his family. Uh, and this was all by coincidence. I swear I wasn't stalking the kid. I'm sure Bobo, like, no, Bobo don't say that because I'll think less of you. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that I noticed that Bobo kind of looked at me and smiled and smiled and he doesn't know me by name i'm sure but has recognized me seen you know seen us you know we've seen him in the state championship game and at the rivals camp and or not the rivals camp under camp stuff like that but he was eating with his family um and then i believe it was maybe bubba's wife was there as well his family uh went to went to another table went to a bar walked out the door and then it was just kind of him and bobo for like 20 30 minutes and then i got up and left they were still there apparently kirby was right there um kirby was there before hanging out with the family and bobo and and uh mr curtis and it was kind of cool to see just they were smiling i could tell that they were having like a good conversation i didn't really overhear i really wish i would ask for an interview just to see what they would have said <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it would have only been an NCAA violation, but I think you still should have asked him for an interview. Yeah. <laughs> Technically, it, it would seem, not have been, like but Georgia, good spirit. Would, Georgia would have handled it as if it were. Um, for folks that wonder why I say that, you're, if you are a school, you are not allowed to arrange publicity for visits or recruiting purposes. In other words, you can't have 50 reporters lined up to – talk to a kid to impress him when he comes to your school. Georgia takes that to an extreme. Whereas if you know, you see him at Amici, you're there having a, a slice of pizza, great pizza, by the way. I love yeah. um, And you happen to see the kid. You're like, Hey, you just committed. Can I, can I talk to you? And Mike Bobo was there. If you'd done an interview and it came out that Mike was there, just the possibility that he could, that they UGA would be accused of setting that up. Yeah. Makes them put the kibosh on it, which is freaking insane. They stopped letting us come to camps because they're like, oh, no, we'll get accused of setting up uh, coverage. Anyway, <clears throat> sorry, pet uh, pet peeve soapbox is rant over. The fact that he obviously was having such a good time with Mike Bobo and the family. He felt it in the moment. And he committed a year earlier than anybody expected him to. And the Bulldogs got him. I like the uh, stuff that we're getting from – uh, the, the uh, national guys saying that uh, w- what is Georgia getting? Uh, George, Curtis has a big arm with ideal size. He's six foot three, 213 pounds as a sophomore. Yeah. Uh, he completed 56% of his passes for 2,500 yards, 25 touchdowns, nine interceptions. And as Jed pointed out, he's a capable runner and chipped in 13 touchdowns on the ground. And that just sounds like a Kirby smart special. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm no yeah. genius, but yeah, and 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 they end the story. You know, Greg Smith. We love what Greg does. He's a, he's a great national recruiting analyst at UGSports.com. I think uh, he summed it up right there at the end. Uh, Smart now has the face of his 2026 recruiting class in place. Yeah, if they keep him, that, that that's a big if. 
Yeah. So what is the likelihood? I'll ask both of you. How like what was the likelihood of him staying committed for two years? <laughs> I don't What's know. Right? I'll try to be an optimist and say hi. Yeah. Just, everybody, everybody that I've read, oh my God, I don't want to follow recruiting, all that, blah, blah, blah. It's two years I, I <laughs> spoken yeah. with jared on the phone a couple times and what i will say is he doesn't seem like a kid that's like super like in love with the recruiting process necessarily he's got a big uh country accent which which people uh down here will love but um you know he doesn't he doesn't strike me as the type who is is committing now just to I don't know to drive to drive up interest from other schools. I guess. Um, I mean, does that one hundred percent mean he'll stick? No, but I think I would feel pretty confident in saying he sticks. I think he's the kind of kid who isn't. Like, I'm part of his decision, and I hope to talk to him uh, at some point this week. I feel like I'm going to ask him about it. He says, "Yeah, I was just ready to be done with recruiting already." So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I, I would feel pretty good about him sticking right now. Yeah. I'd, I'd agree. It seems, it seems like everything I've read, um, you know, Rod, when Roddy was bringing up Jake Fromm, another quarter or another quarterback that committed early more recently was Ryan Puglisi and Puglisi, mm -hmm. you know, kind of stuck through. And I've even done an interview with a coach's corner article with Ryan Puglisi's high school coach. And, you know, the, all the media was there that day at, uh, Hogwarts or whatever school that Puglisi went to, uh, <laughs> uh, la, you know, last May when Rayo when Rayola, uh, you know, committed, and he said Puglisi didn't blink an eye, and I think that uh, just from all what I've read about this kid and just what I've seen, that he's you know he's kind of got that same mindset of Fromm and and uh, Puglisi, and just and just you know doesn't seem like he can you know. He'll tamper off um, at the last minute. Mm -hmm. Plus, then again, I've been, wrong. I've been wrong before. So, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, Justice Terry's. I mean, we had a story what two weeks ago with him talking about. Yeah, other schools are looking at me, but I'm locked in. Yeah. Uh, I do like the fact. I would like to go back and look at the number of guys that go to like a uh, Nashville Christian School or some of these Christian schools, the private schools in general. Private schools aren't cheap. Usually your family's uh, at least got some money. And sometimes that affects it because everyone's like, well, he'll just get a bag at the very end and that'll change it. And let's address the 600 pound elephant in the room. A lot of people are saying, look, I just can't follow recruiting because, you know, all it takes is a kid can be committed for two years like a Dylan Rayola. And the last second, another school comes in with a big pile of cash and they, they flip. And then with the whole Caden Proctor thing, leaving Alabama, Going to Iowa, now going back to Alabama. You know, all the rumors about Caleb Downs, rumors about a ton of other guys in out. It's making it's a lot of people are saying, I just don't want to follow recruiting because it's 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 pointless. The vast majority of kids stick with the school they commit to. Some of the big names who are the only ones getting these giant bags dropped on them are going to flip at the last second. Not much different. I mean, these things happen at the NFL level as well. And I get we don't want to NFLize uh, college football, but that's going, you know, that changes it. But a, a lot of these kids are coming. It's, it seems to be more effective with families who don't have as much money. And this is a, a bird in the hand versus development in three years and going off to the NFL. If you're going to a private school, I tend to think that your finances are pretty good. Now, the Rayolas had a ton of money and they took a <laughs> A lot more and they left so it's not a perfect system i'm just saying uh, sometimes a kid uh well like img you know mm -hmm. if you're paying to go to img you know you've got money so maybe a giant bag at the end and you know you're trying to get to the nfl maybe and someone's saying we'll, we'll give you 30 and someone so else gives you 60. With, with curtis being a 26 kid let's fast forward to this time next year as his class is coming into focus Carson Beck will be ready to become a, I mean, seems like first round draft pick, probably. So, in I'm terms of keeping a guy in the fold, it'll be that point to reinforce hey, if you want to come to Jordan and get developed, come be like Carson Beck, who stayed, waited his turn, which I don't know if Jared Curtis will have to wait three years like Beck did or whatever. But he's going to have to wait behind Juju. Put a quarterback in the first round because 
Carson Beck's about to get drafted here in a couple weeks. Uh, to that point, uh, you mentioned Puglisi sticking. I will give Mike Bobo all the credit in the world. Gunnar Stockton could have left a couple times, and he, he wants to play for Mike Bobo. You know, yeah. so the, the guy before Puglisi is him. You know, uh, Mike Mike is Mike has a lot of loyalty from his players. They love playing for Mike. I know people go Mike Bobo and they roll their eyes, even though you know he did score a lot of his offenses do score a lot of points for Georgia. People are still mad about South Carolina a thousand years ago. But point is, uh, I will put Mike Bobo with quarterbacks up against just about any recruiter in the nation. Yeah. The kid obviously felt that uh, his plan and the development that he has lined up for him over the next two seasons and you know, being that early enrollee will be enough. And, guys, you've got a big-time quarterback. We can't talk about how big this is because, I mean, Ryan Puglisi is huge. Getting Juju Lewis would be huge. Getting this kid would be huge. And if you want to win national championships, got to have a good quarterback to play. So. All right, uh, real quick, I'm going to mention our friends over at uh, the Rogue Shop. If you get a chance, swing by the Rogue Shop. And there's a lot of fake ones out there. there are a lot of people who try to steal, steal the name. But you'll definitely see the logo and you'll know that you're in the right spot. The Rogue Shop makes... <laughs> Gummies, candies, uh, inhalers, tinctures, creams, all sorts of items for you. So that if you are in chronic pain or if you have trouble sleeping or if you just want to have uh, a fun gummy, our friends at The Rogue Shop have something for you. So check them out when you get a chance. Use promo code BULLDOGS10, B-U-L-L-D-O-G-S-1-0, to get 10% off your next order. So if you're like my friend who can't sleep, she takes the gummies before about an hour or so before she goes to bed. If you have chronic pain issues, they have tinctures and creams that will help you with those as well. If your dog has uh, pain, they also have something for your pets as well. So check out our friends at the Rogue Shop, and they will take good care of you. Now, if for some reason uh, you did not hear the news this morning that five-star uh, defensive tackle Justice Terry flipped to USC, I'm going to tell you to take a couple of those gummies. Hmm. <laughs> and just relax. plug <laughs> relax man just freaking relax it, it's it it does suck so anyway that was the news um of course the other news was Trevor, right after this was the fact that trevor Etienne got arrested for a dui that was fun but the real news or the big news this morning uh was the fact that uh just terry flipped to george i mean flipped to usc uh tell us what happened jeff yeah, well, it's part. This really kicked off a day long uh, heater for USC in recruiting, which they just landed another defensive end out of Texas, Gus Cordova. Literally, as we're saying this, so uh, USC's been on fire all day. But yeah, I, uh, I mean, this was about eight eight o'clock this morning, and I rolled over and checked my phone, and I saw it, and I was like, I thought the uh, the trusty rivals app might have been uh, messing up. Um, <clears throat> get on Twitter, and of course, it's not. You know, it was a huge weekend this weekend. Justice was there. Uh, Elijah Griffin, uh, another five-star, was there. Um, and and this is one, I mean, it, it says it in the headline out there. It, it's a shocker because we have said, and Trent, especially Trent, um, who, who's dealing with some family stuff, couldn't be with us, but he has had the pulse of this recruitment. And he has said, yeah, you know, Alabama is a threat, especially pre-Nick uh, Saban's retirement. Florida State's a threat, but we feel confident that, that he's going to stick. He's a Georgia guy. Georgia fan has trained or currently trains with um, Trayvon Walker's, the guy that trained Trayvon Walker. So everything pointed toward Georgia getting him to stick, even through these visits. And then all of a sudden, it it just out of nowhere, it's USC. Now, USC's new defensive line coach trained Aaron Donald, as it says in the story right there. That is a huge selling point for Justice, for Elijah Griffin, for Isaiah Gibson, who also committed, even though it's different positions. So um, yeah, it's a it's a shocker. Um, more so that it is USC than maybe even um, that he flipped at all. But now, granted, I don't think it's over. I still think there is a a decent shot that he ends up back in the class. Michael Williams, uh, it wasn't a flip, but committed to USC out of nowhere uh, three years ago. Obviously, ended up flipping back to Georgia. So Georgia's not going to give up. I mean, Manchester is is obviously a, he's not far from Athens being at home. So um, Georgia's not going to give up. 
there's a decent chance he ends up in the class and signs after all. But uh, yeah, it was a big shocker and stunner this morning for USC. And now for them, the real battle begins of trying to hold on to him for the next nine months. Yeah, and that uh, question from uh, Barry Watkins when talking about Jared Curtis, the quarterback, because Roddy Howe's a huge. We can't guarantee any of them two weeks from now. Don't fall for that bullshit. Man, like we just said, the vast majority of people, of recruits who commit to one school, stay at that school. It's like 80, yeah. 85, 90%. Yes, certain ones flip. Uh, do you want Justice Terry, I mean, uh, Juju Lewis to flip away from USC to come to Georgia? Yes. KJ Bolden picked. Uh, uh, FSU flipped to Georgia on signing day. They're, go- yeah. they're going to be flipped. Don't get don't get in your feelings because a kid spurned your school when you're still trying to steal kids from other schools. The point is, if you go back and look at the big names, Rayola going here, uh, KJ coming, or, you know, Rayola going to Nebraska, KJ yeah. only coming here. The other 30, 40 names on there committed to Georgia and stuck with it. So it's – don't – don't let the actions of a few paint the actions of all of them. So, but this to your was point, a, go ahead, Lance. This was his first trip to USC, right? Jed? I think so. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So I, I mean, I read a couple comments that made made a little bit of sense. Um, you know, this is a Manchester, Georgia, is a small town. I've ridden through there going to cover a game for justice. It's in Merriweather County. You know, not really much in that part of the state. No offense, Roddy. I know you're out. Dude, I'm 35 minutes from there. Screw you. <laughs> no, you're out there. It's a, it's a cool, it's a cool, it's a cool little town. I will say that nothing. But when you Sweet take place. a kid, when you take a kid that he's justice might have never been to California before, especially LA. You take him to LA. They fly him out there. You know they they treat him well. They, you know, I did I read that he was introduced to Aaron Donald or something like yeah. that. Yeah, Aaron yeah. was there at practice. I guess I don't know. It was Friday's practice, Saturday's practice, but yeah, he was he was there uh, for for all the guys who were um, in town. In fact, he filmed a a video that yeah. USC yeah. talked about talking about the new D line coach, saying how he develops guys and whatever. So uh, yeah. yeah, that uh, seeing I mean, one of the and some people say one of the greatest defensive players ever in the flesh, and him saying, "Yeah, that's yeah. the guy that coached me. Let him coach you too." Yeah, I mean it's it's going to be it's a hell of a sales pitch. It's, yeah, it's it's a hell of a pitch, especially for a guy who, like you said, Lance is already, you know, he's he's in a place he's never been, in a city he's never been. Um, he's got stars at in terms of his peers around him as well. So uh, a lot going on, and then you you get that little uh, nugget thrown into the mix. It's a uh, it's, it's it's a lot to handle for sure. Yeah, and then you got the beach and the girls, and uh, sorry, I'm just going on about LA and how nice LA is now. But I mean, it's just it's just something that you know, you know, he just has probably never seen before. And well, and also know. a giant bag of cash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm just yeah, that's where I was slowly getting to. But yeah, I mean, it's just <laughs> the beach, just, the girls. Uh, yeah, the, the, and then, the coach and then they, who and then retired they, out of the NFL yeah. uh, in January. You know, it's like, hey, look, I'm just, I just I was in the NFL office uh, two months ago. Here's what we're looking for. I can get you there. You know, mm-hmm. I did it with Aaron Donald. Oh, by the way, here's here's a big sack of money. Oh yeah. So yeah, I mean, it it is what it is. I mean, this stuff can change so fast. From like we said, I'd never been to USC. Now, the D line coach had visited visited Justice at Manchester. So their relationship had been there. Like that, yeah. that part of it didn't come out of nowhere yeah. at all. Um, but to go from having never visited a place and and Michael, when Michael Williams committed to USC, it was it was so the same way. He might have visited USC before, but he committed on on campus or after he just got back or whatever. And it was like, what? Like you, USC? It just out of nowhere. And this this felt very very similar to me. Um, when I saw this point now, maybe, maybe justice does stick. I don't know. I'm just saying that was my first thought this morning was USC nails the visit, nails everything, nails the presentations, the, the Aaron Donald, whatever, but it's, it's, it's two different things to get a guy's commitment after a huge weekend and then hang on to him for nine months as Georgia goes full board to get him back. I mean, Florida state's not going to give up either. Alabama won't give up either. Um, so it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a battle for for USC to keep them for sure. Yeah, and there's a long wait till signing day too. Mm-hmm. 
You're right. Uh, Athens is two hours from Manchester. Every opportunity that they can swing by there within the NCAA rules, mm -hmm. Georgia coaches will be there. He's yep. got to come back to Manchester and all those kids in the hallways that wear those Georgia jerseys, Georgia T-shirts, everybody in Manchester. It's dog crazy. And yeah, we're yeah. you're technically we're probably closer to uh, uh, Auburn than you are at Athens, but uh, this it is a definitely a Georgia centric town. Uh, I don't know. It just and right in the story there is they talk about Michael Williams who's committed to USC for a while. You know. Uh, then wound up in Georgia's recruiting class. I want to say that feels like a KJ Bolton situation. Because to your point, they're not, they're never ever gonna let they're not gonna take this lying down. So, mm -hmm. and again, you have he's gonna have to justify it for nine months. Now maybe he does stick, and hey, more power to him. You know, uh, good kid. But yeah, we, awesome. we enjoy recruiting him. We're, I mean, we enjoy uh, uh, writing about recruiting with him. I wish him the best of luck wherever he winds up, but. Man, I just don't – I think Kirby's going to take this personally. Yeah. So, just my thoughts there. All right, uh, with that news, and then, of course, uh, USC also picked up Isaiah Gibson. That was one that Georgia wanted as well. Yeah, wanted bad. And, it's again, had seemed to be in pretty good position for him. And it was – that one – I mean, obviously, Isaiah wasn't committed. But, I mean, Georgia looked in good shape. Um, Oklahoma was in that one. I want to say Florida State was as well. And I think Isaiah had told me a few weeks ago, like, yeah, I'm going to take an official visit to, to USC. Um, but, but again, the, it, the commitment comes out of nowhere and it's like, okay. All right. Um, so I don't know. I mean, they got those two, they got Hilton Stubbs, a safety, they got Gus Cordova defensive end, and they got, uh, I believe defensive back today. So huge day for, for USC. And I mean, it seems and I don't know, I could be wrong, but it seems like a coordinated attempt, <laughs> like an effort to like USC wants to make a big splash today by getting all these guys to pop at once. It's a lot and of cash. Great. You have, you have got, it's, it's a great day. There's a lot of excitement in the fan base, especially on the defensive side of the ball, which hasn't been great. But again, it's easy to win a Sunday in March. But now you got to do the the real hard work of of keeping these guys committed for another nine months. So we'll see. You know, if, if all these guys end up sticking, it's going to be one hell of a defensive line class uh, for those guys. It, that it will be phenomenal. But here's the thing. And yes, you might have been completely outbid. That's like the uh, Caleb Down situation. Georgia says, you know, they got a deal for him that's thirty grand a month through NIL. You know, I know some of the people that were going to pay that. NIL and the companies that he would have been the spokesman for. Uh, then USC, I mean, uh, Ohio State comes in and says, yeah, we got a hundred grand. I don't care who you are. Well, a hundred grand is more than 30 grand, even if you're doing Georgia Tech math. So you wind up, uh, you go there. I get it. Let's say that uh, that was, it was the same situation for Justice Terry. More, hey, do what's right for you, young man. But that class, or that basically what they're signing today, we've seen this happen. We saw this happen at Texas A&M. We've seen a lot of people do this. The problem comes down is at some point you have to make payroll. And let's not get, let's not dance around the issue. NIL is payroll. Georgia's had trouble making payroll, if you will, because of some of the NIL things. If you have a kid who's expecting a certain amount of money, and then all of a sudden that that business is like, yeah, we're a little bit behind. He doesn't complain to the business. He comes. He calls the coaches, or he calls the classes to collect. And goes, hey, where, this, where's my money? And they're like, ah, we, you got to call the business. So having it, having the people who put up this money actually pay this money, doesn't always happen. Ask a certain Florida quarterback commit. So I'm just saying, there are variations there, and sometimes you feel like your school is the only one who's not throwing giant bags of cash at people. Some and not every uh, kid is getting money from the same business. So every time you bring in a new business to sign one of these big NIL deals, you got to make sure that they're going to pay their end of it, and that, that doesn't always work. So making payroll is not as easy as it sounds. That's why you guys don't get paid for that, right? Yeah, you don't have to worry about it because you don't you don't pay us to begin with. So yeah, see, it makes it easier. <laughs> it makes it easier yeah. on you. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, is, it is legal to pay players. Yeah, you can pay them for NIL. So, uh, apparently, Carl Soriano is a big USC fan. How many? Hey, Carl, tell us how many uh, five-star defensive linemen or how many defensive linemen have, have uh, been drafted in the first round of USC in the last few years? Has Reggie, has Reggie Bush gotten his Heisman back? USC is a decent school. Just to, again, they got to make payroll. We got to see if it happens. Anyway, the question is now: uh, Georgia gets Stephon Shivers, uh, but they lose Justice Terry. What does Georgia do on the defensive line? You put up a story after um, Jed did after yeah, uh, Stephon Shivers players. committed. So, let's, so who's next? Where, where do we go from here? Well, it's it's Elijah Griffin. He's still, but now, again, let's let's put the the. USC committed guys to the side because there's still a, a chance Georgia gets them. But other than them, um, you know, Elijah Griffin's still priority number one. That the retech could slide into maybe a, a one or a zero, could play all over the place. He was at USC this weekend. He has survived the, uh, you know, the wave of commitments so far. So, so far. Him last week, he, the way he phrased it, made it seem like he was just going to check it out, go to California, and he'd never been to California. Justice Terry had never been in California either, so uh, we'll see with Elijah Griffin. But uh, I like where Georgia is with him. Um, you know, you look at some of these other guys. Uh, Malik Autry is a guy from Auburn that they've been in contact with a lot, um, has visited multiple times since being committed to Auburn. That that momentum seems to not necessarily be what it might have been a few months ago. Um, but, I mean, like I put in the story right there, you get him, get him back for an official visit again, you know, all bets are off. Um, from there, Isaiah Gibson again. I mean, George's got a shot at him. I don't know. Um, that I mean, hey, is he's in Warner Robins, man. That's even closer. 90 yeah. minutes and Christian will be there. Uh, I mean, Christian Garrett Lance, he's a guy that you know pretty well. He's at Prince Avenue, he's been to Athens. Like, yeah, he's next to you guys, actually. Lance, you know pretty well. Mm -hmm. Christian Garrett has been in Athens a, a lot. lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. He lives, so, in Mon lives in Monroe, like, goes to, goes to, like, or goes plays high school ball for Brock Vandegrift's dad. So, um, I mean, he's that. Let's see, what do we have listed at two eighty five? So he's again another one of these three tech guys, um, to kind of stock up in the middle there. Kevin Wynn. Kevin Wynn is interesting because I think he, looking at his weight right there, he might project maybe more as that nose roll that Stephon Shivers would be. But I mean, he's. I mean, three nineteen. You slim him up to you know knocking yeah. around three hundred, and he fills in it as a three tech. Maybe that could kick inside. So, um, that's a guy who's been to Athens. Another guy who has been there a lot as well. So Easy. and yeah, and, again, and so many all these what's next and and who big boards and whatever. None of this is accounting for the kid who shows up on campus and camps in the spring or in the summer, and blows the coaches away, and. Um, and they they offer they ramp up the interest whatever so there's right. plenty of room for that as well. Uh, the I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean at this time last year, I mean Namdi Agboko wasn't really on the radar, um, and he obviously is in, is is signed and on campus now. So um, a lot of good options out there. And, and again, the the two guys who are committed to USC are are not off the board uh, by any means. And I see people over here, you know, Jared Smith, Zion Grady, Bryce Davis. Those guys are like. Edge outside linebackers. Honestly, I don't really know where to draw the line between those guys and the D linemen. So um, those guys are very much well, that's how Georgia uh, projects them in the future. Yeah, I mean those guys are all very much priorities as well. Um, just I didn't mention them in that story specifically because um, I was looking at more hand at guys who will be with their hand in the dirt all the time. I guess it was was kind of mm -hmm. what I was going for there. Three three or more inside, you know, not mm -hmm. three to five to seven going out. I guess. And, and again, I don't want to call it a the USC, the flip to USC, a visit high, although it has that feeling about it because he is committed there. He flipped. They, they, this is a kid who's raved about Georgia. For him to flip, it had to be something really, really impressive or really, really uh, part of his uh, the presentation or promises or whatever had to be really big. Uh, but if we want to call that a visit high, then hey, maybe call the Jared Curtis commitment a visit high. So, yeah. although he has been to Georgia before, you know, so 
again, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. My only thought is, didn't the uh, state of Georgia pass it so the kids can get NIL while still in high school? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Now, technically, they would need to get that from you would think from you know something about the making money as their high school potential, but there's no real rules with it. So if all of a sudden, if you're the USC booster and you've got a car dealership out there and you're like, hey, I want uh, Justice Terry to be the face of our car dealership uh, and you start paying him out. And all of a sudden he starts making 20, 50, 60 grand a month in high school. He can still sign with the Bulldogs on that mid middle of December. Yep. So in other words, if you're a high school kid right now, you can yeah. still go ahead and start getting paid by whoever's going to start paying you in college, you go ahead and start asking for it now. And I think we, we, there was this the story last year or the last recruiting cycle about kids demanding money to go on visits. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'll visit your school, but I want five grand to do so. We're going to see a lot more of that. And we're going to see a lot more kids. I'll sign right now, but I want you to start paying me. If I'm Kirby Smart and I get a kid saying, look, uh, I want you know, you're going to pay me 30 grand when I enroll in January. I'd like it now. Tell that kid to hit the damn bricks. Because I know it happened to FSU already. They paid a kid for six months or so. And then that kid went elsewhere. It, you gonna tell me that that person's gonna pony up NIL in the future? Whoever mm -hmm. paid that, it will never do it again. So I said, but again, there are other schools who are desperate and they got uh, boosters who will do that. So it is it is a new, new, uh, a new world, if you will. Uh, let's, let's finish up with this. The, the last one here, um, or I think we had one question came in from the uh, page, but I want you to tell us a little bit about, um, your story today about Zyke Hilton. He's a 2026 kid, but I, I'm just fascinated by this kid. So tell me about Zyke Hilton and the fact that, uh, Georgia seems to be in a good spot there. Yeah. Out of Carrollton had been committed to Alabama since July. I'm um, decommitted on the 16th, I think, so just over a week ago. Um, his rival's profile lists him at 320 pounds. But, Roddy, we we saw him at um, at the Under Armour camp. He had lost, like, 50 pounds through a, a, a battle Seven. with Crohn's disease. Um, looked great and played super well at the camp. Just, there's there's no shot he was 320 pounds. Now, you look in this – I mean, in this picture here, he looks even – like he's gained even more weight since we saw him and he said you know he's he takes shots in his leg like all he's managing the crohn's disease well and is coming back from it um but yeah you know i asked him about the visit and i just asked him because i looked back in my old messages with him and when he got offered by georgia last may he said yeah my top two is georgia and alabama and i was like okay well you're decommitted from alabama now where is georgia in your recruitment he said yeah they're number one all right so, yeah, I mean, Stacey Cyril, they did a great job keeping in contact with him, keeping those lines of communication open while he was committed. Um, Man Ray St. Amour, who is now on Del McGee's staff at Georgia State, was really close with him as well. Um, you know, he, he visited over this weekend. He's going to be back for G-Day in not even a month. So two visits in the span of four weeks is a, a, a pretty good sign of, of where Georgia's at in this recruitment, I would say. Along with, along with the kid literally coming out and saying that they're uh, in first place. Yeah, uh, this was a kid who he lost a ton of weight when he said he was a two fifty. I'm like, really? And he he was proud of that because he had lost so much weight with Crohn's and he had something else. And he's like, everything I ate, I was just throwing up. He lost. I mean, so we had him what three thirty or three twenty. He was down to two fifty. That's after he put weight back on, uh, but he kicked yeah. everybody's butt. He's not very tall. As a technician, I mean, we just did a whole week's worth of news about Jared Wilson, the current Georgia replacement center. You know, he's replacing Cedric Van Brand as being an athletic freak and being fast. You know, Kirby Smart says, look, he might be faster than some of our tight ends and some of our DBs. Uh, this kid is freakishly fast. And so, again, if he was here with Jared uh, Curtis, and I could definitely see that kind of a one-two punch as they start building out that uh, offensive line. So, or offensive Sides of the ball. Very interesting there. All right. Uh, you also have one little, the last thing I said, this was last one. Um, CB, uh, C buck 11 asked us on the vault. Uh, obviously Kirby won't start 
stop recruiting uh, Terry or Gibson, but what does UGA do now at the defensive line position? We kind of covered that by going down who the other options were. So thank you for the question, uh, CBuck11. That's why we added it on there. Uh, last thing, what were you telling me about uh, Georgia's uh, as a wide a wide receiver potential? Yeah, well, the, there there's several guys that are in position with the guy – from a, a timeless standpoint, Taylor Taylor visited this weekend. And and he there, there's so many guys, whether it's Travis Smith, Josh Moore, Eugene Hilton, there's a lot of guys that um CJ Wiley as well that George is in really good shape with. And it was there was a little bit of wondering like where exactly yeah, Marcus Harris down here as well, where exactly Taylor Taylor might fit into the pecking order there. Um, but, but but speaking with some sources through this weekend, uh, there there is a spot for Taylor and Taylor if he wants one. Family had a great visit. This was their first time meeting and hanging out with James Coley. Couldn't have went any better. Um, so yeah, I, I really like where George is at for Taylor and Taylor, and he's the number I want to say six receiver in the country. So you know this is in a story I've got going up tomorrow. But there's him, Smith, Wiley, Hilton, Josh Moore. Um, you know there's a a very good potential for this George receivers class to be one of the most well-rounded talented classes that Kirby Smart has signed just because they're in such good position with so many guys um, at this point in the cycle. And my dad. <laughs> yeah. But some of those guys, some of those guys that they're recruiting, um, someone brought this up, I think on the event. I don't know if it was a story I had about it was either Wiley or Travis Smith, but George is going after like kind of a, a bigger, a bigger body receiver because you look at look up the hype for some of these, you know, guys, especially Travis Smith and CJ Wiley. They're like six foot four. And you know, you look at this, you look at this last class, obviously, um, Nicar didn't get or didn't end up in it, but you know, Nitro Truggle, very, you know, very skilled player. It's Kobe White, but just just a little, little under I wouldn't say undersized, but just kind of this class is not the Normal not type big. of guy that, uh, yeah. And I'm looking at Nitro. He's six foot one, one ninety on uh, UGA's website right now. You look at uh, like Travis Smith. I think he's like six foot four, um, two hundred pounds. So looks yeah, like they're trying to, you know, yeah, yeah. So it just seems like they're uh, trying to go after a different type of, um, you know, receiver in this class. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I heard from the coaches, cl- oh, I say the one thing, one, one of the things we heard from the coaches clinic was, hey, man, y'all seen that Colby Young guy? Yeah. And that's a hey, big doesn't mean anything. Uh, uh, Dom Love is not the biggest guy, but he tears it up. You know, uh, you don't, you don't have to be six or four to do it, but it doesn't hurt to have that. You know, it doesn't hurt to have that guy who, again, if you put Dylan Bell on one side, he's going to muscle out muscle you, and if you put Colby Young on the other side and he out jumps you, that was good. So, to your point though, Lance, if you if you got a bunch of six foot six one guys and now you get a chance to get a six three six four guy, because you just want you want options, especially down in distance uh, red zone, things change. So, uh, anyway. That, that does help. That's a lot of uh, good stuff that from you guys this week. We really appreciate it. Anyway, that's all the time we have for this week's show. We appreciate all the questions, all the comments. If you guys would do us a huge favor, leave a comment on the actual YouTube show or on uh, if you're watching us on Facebook, if you put a comment there, not just in the chat section, we'd greatly appreciate it. And hit subscribe on either this YouTube channel or on Twitter or hit uh, uh, like on our Facebook page. It does wonders for us when we go live. The more people that do that, the more people are notified that we've got the show. So all I'm trying to do is get the word out about what we do here. So, uh, and uh, our thoughts are with Trent. He would normally be with us, but he had a uh, uh, he has some family issues that he's dealing with. So uh, our thoughts and sympathies are with him. So uh, we love having him on the show, but we understand why he couldn't be with us today. And if we, we don't yet. We wouldn't ask him to come on Monday either. So appreciate all of you tuning in on this special emergency edition of uh, Rumors versus Facts. We will be back next Monday. Talk to you later.